Well, hello again, and welcome to the VK6 Years Fun with an Amateur Radio Channel. Um, someone asked me the other day if I could just do a quick video showing this L Match tuning other bands, so um, I'll just do it very quickly. Um, so what I'll do is uh, I'll just I'll just show you the tune. I won't show show you me tuning it because I have to lean over the components to do it. And on the higher frequencies, it affects the tuning. It's a bit fiddly, but. Um, you know, if I was standing around the other side of it, then uh, it would be um, it would be quicker to do. Uh, even though it's a bit fiddly, it doesn't take that long. It's just a couple of minutes, but um, uh, probably a couple of minutes. It's a, a, it would be a waste of time showing on video. Okay, so there we go. There's the match on 20 meters. That's the same old match. You'll see the different positions of the uh, the variable inductor. And the variable capacitor there for this band. Uh, this is uh, so. This is the match for 20 meters, 1.1 to 1, and 50 ohms. There you go. 1.1 to 1 and 50 ohms. I just noticed I've got a scratch on the screen of my blooming analyzer. I hope that comes off. Okay, so that's uh, that's 20 meters. Now there's the match at 21 megs, 21.1, 1.1 to 1, 50 ohms. So the position of the inductor and the capacitor. So that's the match at 21 megs. Focus. Come on, don't do this to me. Okay, now there's the match. There's the match on 24 megs, 24.9. 1.1, 50 ohms. You can see how broad that tune is. It's 500k sweet width there. There's the L match. L match uh, matches tuners do give you a nice wide bandwidth tune. There we go. So that's the position of the capacitor and the inductor, and on. Going <laughs> backwards, of course. I'm crouching. 1.1 50 ohms. At 24.9 megs. Okay, now here's uh, 10 meters. Doesn't really like 10 meters very much. Yeah, the best I can do on 10 meters is about 2 to 1. Uh, 48 ohms. Can get it to 50 ohms, but um, it stays at about the SWR stays at about 2. So 28.5 doesn't really like that very much. Let's see where the components are. I think the capacitor, even the minimum capacitance on that capacitor is probably a little bit much. I think it's fully unmeshed. There's not very much on the uh, variable inductor either, as you might expect. So for 10 meters, um, not really, uh, not really a goer. Okay, so that's 10 meters. Okay, now it's on 40 meters. Position of the inductor and the capacitor down there. And there is the match for 40 meters, 7093. 1.1 1 .1 to 1 and 50 ohms. 1.1 1 .1 to 1 and 50 ohms on 40 meters. Okay, well here's the match for 80 meters. 
1.1 to 1 and 50 ohms, 3.605. And there is the position of the inductor and the capacitor. You can see that when the capacitor, how much of it is meshed. Give a bit of view. There uh, so I've tried it on most of the bands. It's, uh, it doesn't provide a very good match on 10 meters on 28 megs and it doesn't provide a very good match on uh, 160 meters on 0.8 megs. But uh, anywhere in between um, it gives a 1.1 to 1 um, at, uh, at 50 ohms. So from 80 meters, 40, 20, you know, 21 megs, 24 megs, 1.1 to 1, and uh, and 50 ohms. So it's quite a useful little tuner. And by changing the values of the capacitor and the uh, the inductor, um, a few mosquitoes around, it would also tune uh, 10 meters and 160. Um, I'm not particularly interested in most of those bands. I'm only really interested in uh, 80 and 40. Uh, and 20, so uh, I won't be mucking around with that, but um, uh, it just shows you how uh, how good the L match is, how wide the uh, the response of the tune is, and um, you know for uh, very very simple matching, uh, very very simple matching arrangement, just two components, it's really quite versatile and quite useful. And um, as I say, if the roller inductor was had a little more inductance on it, and the capacitor had a smaller minimum capacitance. Um, it would also do 160 and 10 meters. So as always, I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll catch you next time.